Welcome to ChemDoodle Shorts. I'm Mary, your ChemDoodle Pro. Let's practice interpreting proton NMR spectra of small linear alkanes. You've learned the basics of proton NMR. Now let's study some spectra to become more familiar. Let's begin with the simplest hydrocarbon, methane. It consists of one carbon surrounded by four hydrogen atoms. Each of these hydrogens is the same. They all see the same chemical environment. So we can expect to see just one peak in the spectrum. To simulate a proton NMR spectrum in ChemDoodle, select the chemical structure, then select the spectrum menu. Generate proton NMR. Alternatively, we can use the NMR signal seq widget to simulate and interact with the spectra. First, select the structure from the Doodle board, then drag and drop it into the widget's main structure panel. The carbon-13 NMR spectrum is shown on the top, and the proton NMR spectrum is displayed below. We see a couple signals in the proton NMR spectrum for methane. The rightmost peak is at zero. Recall that this singlet is from TMS, tetramethylsilane, an internal standard from which other peaks are determined relative to it. The other signal is just slightly downfield from it, less than one. Zooming in, we see that the chemical shift of this signal is 0.23, indicating that these protons are shielded and not near electron withdrawing groups. This supports what we see from methane's structure. The hydrogens are all bonded to carbon, so there are no deshielding effects. Also, as we expected, we see just one signal from methane because all four hydrogens are chemically equivalent. In methane, there are no neighboring hydrogens, so using the n plus 1 rule, where n is the number of neighboring hydrogens, 0 plus 1 is 1, or a singlet. As expected, we observe a single peak. We can see that methane has a simple proton NMR spectrum. What about propane? Propane has three carbons and eight hydrogens, C3H8. From the structure, we see that there are two types of hydrogens. The hydrogens on the middle secondary carbon, seen in blue, and the hydrogens on the terminal carbons, seen in red. The leftmost carbon is bonded to a CH2 group, and the rightmost carbon is bonded to a CH2 group. There's a plane of symmetry through the middle secondary carbon, so the six hydrogens on the terminal carbons are chemically equivalent. With two types of hydrogens, we expect to see two signals in the proton NMR spectrum. And we do, both near one part per million. There is a triplet with an integration of six for the six hydrogens on the two terminal carbons. As both terminal methyl groups are the same, we can simply focus on one terminal carbon to understand the splitting. Looking at the rightmost carbon, we see that there are two neighboring hydrogens, seen in red, on the next carbon over. The n plus one rule tells us that two plus one equals three, so these terminal hydrogens should display as a triplet. Let's look at the second signal, which is slightly downfield from the first signal. This signal has an integration of two and is generated from the two circled hydrogens on the middle secondary carbon. It is a septet with seven peaks because there are six neighboring hydrogens, seen in red. Six plus one equals seven. Let's consider a halo alkane, one chlorobutane. This molecule has a linear butane backbone with a chlorine atom on a terminal carbon. There are four different types of hydrogens, highlighted in blue, red, green, and pink. As such, we see four distinct signals in the proton NMR spectrum. Let's begin upfield with a signal around one part per million. It has an integration of three and corresponds with the three hydrogens on the terminal methyl group. These hydrogens are farthest from the electron withdrawing chlorine, so they are most shielded and therefore found on the right side of the spectrum. There are two neighboring hydrogens, seen in red. Two plus one equals three, so we see the signal split as a triplet. The next signal, around 1.4 part per million, with an integration of two, is generated by the two circled hydrogens on carbon three. These protons are a bit closer to the chlorine atom than the terminal methyl hydrogens so their chemical shift is a bit downfield. This signal appears to be split into six peaks. Six minus one equals five, which means there should be five neighboring hydrogens, which we see highlighted in red and green. Let's continue moving downfield to the next signal around 1.7 part per million. This signal has an integration of two and correlates to the two circled hydrogens on carbon two. 
These two hydrogens are even closer to the chlorine atom, so the chemical shift continues to move downfield. There are four total neighboring hydrogens, so 4 plus 1 equals 5, which we see in the signal's peaks. Finally, the last signal is from the two hydrogens closest to the chlorine. These two hydrogens are bonded to the same carbon atom as the chlorine, shifting the signal downfield to about 3 parts per million. Recall that electron withdrawing groups, such as chlorine, deshield the hydrogens, causing the signal to move downfield to the left. The signal is split into three peaks. 3 minus 1 equals 2, meaning there are two neighboring hydrogens, seen in red. As you continue to study and practice proton NMR, you will become quicker at and more comfortable with analyzing spectra. Thanks for watching Chemadoodle Shorts.